I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the Keychron Q2, the newly released younger and smaller sibling of the Keychron Q1. Except my Q2 broke after just two weeks and find out why coming up. I've got the Keychron Q2, the knob version. Knobs are the best. They make you cool. They make you get, you know, the person that you want to like you. Knobs are OP. Sleek compact customizable they literally say this on every single box every single keyboard that they make brown switch knob version but they also sent me the other switches they sent me the red switches and the blue switches as well so this is something that I missed the first time that I opened up the Q1 is that there's tools down here. A super cool screwdriver, an Allen wrench. I think it's a, an Allen wrench to open it up. A not so great switch puller and a nice keycap puller. They opted for a straight cable. Thank goodness because the coil cable of the Q1 was a little bit sketchy. Let me show you. The Q1 came with this, this coiled cable that doesn't even sit straight on your cable and has, I don't know, four to five inches from your USB port to the coils. They just made a good decision with this one. Good decision. But extra stuff. No one really cares about extra stuff. And Windows keycaps because we all use Windows. Unless you don't, then, then well, you don't. <laughs> This is completely stuck. I have done zero things to this keyboard. So I've been using it for two weeks now and it looks beautiful. I've actually been using the knob because I play games where you can't like go out of the full screen mode very easily. So the knob's actually useful. Surprise. What type of dog? This is a keyboard. How does it sound? Sound test. It's pretty good. There is one key that sort of annoys me, but that doesn't bother me since I never, ever, ever press this key in the first place. And that is the left shift. These are brown switches. So these are Gateron G Pro Browns. That makes them pre-lubed. They're pretty good pre-lubed. Like... So no spring ping. They're very consistent. Unlike other pre loops, which is that I've used before, these are pretty good. The top looks really good. There's a knob. The knob is not perfectly aligned with the top of the keycaps. It's not in a great place. If you were to replace this knob with a normal keycap, it would just look wonk. Real wonk. Just jank. Not good. And the back looks exactly like the Q1. Q1 is here. Q2 is here. It's just smaller than the side. I like the side. Usually keyboards look really bland from the side, but this, this is nice. Q1, Q2, very much the same sleek edges here. It's so much better than just a block. And a nice upgrade from the Q1 to the Q2 is that instead of getting double shot ABS keycaps right here, which are ultra smooth and feel sort of sticky, you get double shot TBT keycaps, except the profile is OSA and Keychron calls that OEM spherical keycaps. It's just a different profile. Initially, I hated it. I was like, I can't wait to change these to cherry. Ooh. It's just so circular on the top. It's spherical. It's exactly what they said it would be, but I don't super duper love it. As for price for this version, this is the knob in black with G Pro Browns, and that is $180 for bare bones with the knob and without switches or keycaps. It's $160. But those are the prices it ranges from $150 to $180. Back to the keyboard. At the top you do have your Windows Mac switch just like on the Q1 and your USB-C port. Here you need a you need a knob sound test. Here we go. Okay, let's put a red and a blue switch in. How does it feel like to type on? I can't just explain it in like subjective terms. Comparing it to like the GMK Pro or the Q1 or even the Ducky 1-3 Mini. Like it has a very comfortable typing feel. You don't feel like the tips of your fingers are about to break. I mean, it's not that intense, but it is better than the GMK Pro. Can you screenshot with this? You can program these keys or you can like program the, the press of the knob so you can do anything you can do whatever you want Pro blue red and brown remember where they are because i won't j g and h Ooh. 
The red definitely sounds the best. It's not talky though. It's like an in-between sound, which I don't hate. I don't hate it. It, it just is not what I want. Is it worth the money? Yes. Yes, it is worth the money. You get everything in one package instead of going to this website for this, going to this website for that, going over there for this. So, like It makes sense in that way. But if you're going to say like, oh, is $180 a lot? Yes, it is a lot. Is it as pingy as a Q1? It's not. It's like a very different sound. Water break. <laughs> How do you think this would sound with the NK new silk switches? Is that like the NK silk red, yellow, black? Because I actually plan on putting some silk switches in there today. So you're in luck because that's what I'm going to do to it. That's exactly what I wanted to put in it. I have the NK silk Olivia's because I wanted a little some special colors, if you know what I'm saying. OK, I'm going to take it apart. That's good because I really wasn't a huge fan of these keycaps. They're great and all. It's nice that they're they're PBT and double shots, but I'm really not a fan. And I'm also linear gang secretly, so these browns weren't working it. Although to be fair, Gateron G Pro browns are much more tactile than I expected them to be. So Keychron did send this over to me along with a bunch of other things that I guess I should speak about, but I'll do it after I take off these keycaps. Oh, one thing, the knob comes out so easily compared to the GMMK Pro where the knob was like, no, I'm just not going to come out. This one, you just yank it. Well, you don't even have to yank it here. This barely takes any effort to take it out. You just go whoop and there it goes. Original OSA keycaps. Goodbye. Before I continue, I actually need to show you everything else that Keychron sent over, including these disgustingly festive keycaps. Look at that space bar. What is this? The worst part is they sent me these after Christmas had already ended. So what was I to do other than put these keycaps on? And I did. And I did. I used them. I used them for about a week. And then I said, I just can't look at these anymore. I can't. It's just so gross. The next one was called JM75. Equally as festive, except in a different way. OEM PBT set number two. I also put this this on a keyboard as soon as I got them because you know I thought they looked pretty clean pretty nice but again disgustingly festive they're like New Year's it looks better but not not better that I can use them all year long kind of better that's gonna sit somewhere until next year okay the next thing is the resin I almost dropped it. Is the resin wrist rest resin poured? Very nice. I was actually worried that they would be too tall, but this one fits fairly nicely. Perfectly sized. Doesn't rest too high when you're playing. You can be like, oh yeah, I'm playing a game, having a good time, you know. So if you're interested in any of those accessories, they have them on their website. Screws. So top plate, it does come with these already pre-installed force break thingies. So keyboard, good job. If they didn't like credit him for that or something, I, I mean, I'd be pissed because clearly he came up with a solution for this and they just copied it and made it into silicone instead of like blue tape. Next, you just pull it out. Here's a PCB and plate combination. The bottom case doesn't have any of those force break thingies, but it's so thick that the bottom plate doesn't really need anything. You have your super ultra thin packing foam layer here used as foam. And then you also have, you have a very thick, thin piece here of a thin plastic. It feels like, you know, the old school film. It feels like that. So these are Keychron's new stabilizers. And as you can see, I thought this was really cool, is that you can get to these smaller stabilizers on backspace, enter and left shift without taking like the whole plate apart from the PCB. You can't do that with the space bar though. And I think that's really unfortunate. I don't know why. And just so I can prove it to you, I'll do it right now. Super smart. It's a problem I had with, with other keyboards. It's like, oh, the stabilizer suck, but I'm too lazy to take apart the whole keyboard just so I can replace the stabilizers. All you do is like lift it up and then you can pull the bar or no, you can't. That's so sad. You can't do it. I'm so disappointed in them. 
Just why, why, why would you not have that as a feature? That pisses me off. Let's take out the switches. So full aluminum case, but the plate is steel. On the steel plate, my gaskets on the top and the bottom of the top left, the top right and the bottom left and bottom right. And you can see from all the pre-lube switches here, the dirty remaining lube is everywhere. So plate foam, not super compressible or anything. It's like pretty thick, pretty dense, lightweight though. So that's nice. And then stabilizers already come pre-lubed. If you want, you could redo your stabilizers, but that does involve this entire process of taking it apart. For me, it was pretty decent out of the box to the point where I was like, you know what? This whole process takes so long, but while I'm here and have it taken apart, I'm going to put back the screws on the stabilizers. Yeah, completely flat bottom. No need for clipping. All you have to do is lube it if you want. Very cute. I really like the way it looks. So here is why I couldn't take out the stabilizer with the plate on it. See these, these prongs here, they bend down and they stick out. So you can't take out the wire for some odd reason. Why would you Dude, ah, so annoying. So far, what is it that you really don't like about the board? Uh, the reason I really don't like it is that I've only been using it two weeks. The first week, it was perfect. It was perfect. Nothing wrong with it. Second week, started key chattering like crazy to the point where I'm just typing normal things like normal email. I have to go back and, and read and correct stuff or like passwords. I get it wrong like three times in a row and I'm like, I know I'm typing it right. I know I am. It's key chatters. It's like, come on, it's been two weeks. I really hope that it's just the switches and that the keyboard is good to go. That's gonna put it back together because we just wanted to see it all taken apart. Quick, easy access reset button here on the PCB. How do you put the foam in like this? And then like this, very easy to take apart, easy to put back together. New switches, NK Silk Olivia's. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm just screwing in screws. So overall, this is a really fast process. If you want to open it up, put it back together, I would say it's pretty foolproof, not hard, and you don't have to keep track of a billion screws. Just 16 maybe. Put these switches in. Let me make sure it works before I put keycaps on. Here we go. One. All right, everything works now. And the keycaps. The keycaps match my desk in a very beautiful manner. Yes, I know what you're saying. Oh my gosh, GMK keycaps. Why are they in a bag? Because space is a big problem around here. So this is GMK Modern Dolch 2. Yay. Sound test. And that is that. That was the Keychron Q2. It's a really good keyboard. If you're interested in purchasing it, there's a link in the description down below. Easy for you to access. And I think you'll also like this video right here if you haven't seen it already.